Hello folks, um, I just wanted to give you a recording um, on my solution to what I'm calling the, the light bulb. So this is where you've started, I've just created a blank project, 2D project, um, and I've imported the uh, basic switches getting started package that's up on Moodle in week one. Uh, and the idea is to create a light bulb and be able to turn it on and off when you go into these switches. So I have, and I'm going to start from scratch, so I have some sprites, there is a bulb for the sprite, and I'll just drag that in, and I'll put it here. Now what I could have done also is I could have just created a, a blank game object and added in the sprite render format. The bulb is called bulb off, or, or the game object is called bulb, bulb off, because that is what the sprite was called. Poor name for a game object, um, so I'm going to call it bulb. So. Uh, uh, what I want to be able to do is, I want I need an animator attached to this, and I need to be able to, uh, and I also need some uh, code attached to it that will turn on and off the um, the bulb. So let's start with the animator. So I'm going to add a component here. I'm going to type in animator. Uh, click that here, and now I am going to create a new animator. So I'll go to my animator folder, right click create and I am going to create an animator controller. Give it a sensible name like maybe uh, bulb animator and this is the state machine that will con which will contain the animations. Uh, so I'll go to bulb and there we go my animator and I'll just drag it in there. There you go. So now my bulb has a sprite renderer um, and it also has an animator, the bulb animator. And if I double click on it and I open it up, there it is. It is, and I'll just make this a little bit wider. Uh, and it is pretty blank at the moment. Okay, now I need to create uh, two animations. So I'll go to my animations folder, I'll right click, uh, create and I'll create an animation and I'll call it bulb on and I'll also need another animation I'll create it um, animation and I'll call it bulb off um, and now I need to add those animations to this animator so I'll drag in the bulb off and I'll drag in the bulb on so this animation controller, which is the bulb animation controller, the minute it starts, it will automatically transition into the bulb off state. So it'll automatically go to the bulb off animation. Uh, and now I'll need it to progress to the bulb on animation. So I will create a transition. So I'll create, make a transition and I'll say, there you go. So, so that will allow me to go from bulb off animation to the bulb on animation. And I need another transition in the other way in the other direction of course. Um, now I need some type of condition on which I'll be able to sort of move from uh, one state to the other so I am going to create a parameter these are known as animation parameters uh, bo a boolean would be a perfectly uh, good one to do or to, to use and I will call it on and so we are going to go from the bulb off to the bulb on stage and here I add in my condition when uh, on is true and we are going to go from the bulb on to the bulb off state and I'll add my condition when on is false okay looking good um, now I will go to my animation window so notice I have an animator and then I have animations um, so I'll click on my uh, bulb and you see there's two animations the bulb off animation and there is the bulb on animation. And currently there's absolutely, there's no uh, series of images or frames uh, associated with any of these. So I will go to my sprites. This is the bulb off animation. I'll take my sprite and I'll just uh, drop it in here to frame one. So if I open up this, you can see that the sprite is a um, bulb. And I can even play it at this stage, I think. Yeah, and I will just play that, that frame over and over. Uh, so then I'll go to the bulb, that was the bulb off, I'll now go to the bulb on animation, I'll take the bulb on image, 
And there you go. Usually now you'd have uh, multiple frames in an, in an animation. This is a, a ridiculously simple one. So I have a bulb off and a bulb on. So I should be able to test it now, hopefully. So if I go to my scene, and if I play the bulb on animation, yeah, there you go, it's playing. Um, and we, we, we see the bulb lighting up. And if I switch to the bulb off and I play that animation, uh, there you go, yeah, it's just, there you go. And we're seeing the, the bulb off uh, animation. And again, what I can also do is just to test it, I could uh, play my game and I look at the animator here and you see that straight away we went into the bulb off animation and if I tick this uh, property here now and make it on yeah it switches to the bulb on state um, and if I turn it off it switches to the bulb off state. So that's how I'm going to trigger my anim animation using code I'm going to just turn on and I set this on property to uh, true and, uh, and to false and that will turn on and off my animations. Okay, that's my animator built. Now I'm going to write code to actually turn it on and off. So um, in my scripts, in my starter code, I already have created a bulb controller script. So essentially I right-clicked, I, right -clicked, I went to create, I went C-sharp script, and I called it bulb uh, controller. Um, so I'm going to open this up. I have it opened up in, in uh, the other window here. So let me just drag it in. And here is um, my bulb controller. So there's a few things I can do. Um, so I'll start here with, let me just go back to the scene. Let me go back, click on the bulb, and let's just make sure I add this script to it. There we go. So this bulb needs a reference to the animator. So in here, I'm gonna create a instance variable, and I could do it this way. I could go P-U-B, I public, animator, D, Again, you can call it, uh, and I'll actually call it the uh, the bulb animator, just so that for clarity. Uh, so there's a variable that can hold uh, an animator component. So I'll save that. I'll go back into um, Unity. Oh, sorry. I'll go back into Unity, and you can see now it's, it's appearing bulb animator. And now I could grab this and I could drag it down like that, and I have it wired up. That's one way I could do it. Um, the other way I could do it is uh, rather than physically wiring it up, I could have wired it up programmatically. So this is generally done in the awake uh, function. The awake function is called just before the start function. So um, so when the scene starts, Unity calls the awake function on all game on all scripts that are attached to all game objects in the scene. Now remember, uh, just be conscious of what I said. When the when the scene starts, Unity will call the awake function on all scripts that are attached to game objects who, that are in the scene. So if this script wasn't attached to a game object in the scene, the awake function wouldn't get called. And then after calling awake on all of the scripts, it then calls start on all the scripts. And then uh, it, ca it, it calls update then every frame after that. Um, so in here, I could do something like um, the bulb an animator equals game object dot get component uh, actually, sorry, I don't even need to go. Sorry, I'll go just to get component. And uh, it's this one I want. Angle brackets, the name of the type of component I want. I want the animator. Uh, animator. And then two brackets. So that's going to get me a component, an animator component, on this game object and put it equal to the bulb animator. So it's essentially doing exactly the same as what I do manually. It will get this and dra sort of put this uh, equal to it, put the bulb animator variable equal, equal to this. Now that I'm doing it programmatically, of course, I don't have to make this public anymore. I can make it uh, private P and spell it right. So I can make it private. Um, I could have left it public as well, it doesn't matter, but it, it doesn't need to be anymore. And now I'm going to write two functions. I'll make them public uh, and I will call one function um, public they're going to return the thing and the first one is going to be turn light on and simply to turn the light on um, I am going to go to the bulb animator and I'm going to say will you please set the bool uh, the boolean parameter 
uh, which I've called on, remember, um, to true. So again, I'll just check my spelling. So the parameter is called on. Back here in my ama an animator, yeah, it's called on. Lovely. So that's how you turn the, the bulb on. And similarly to uh, public void turn light off, I simply go the bulb animator dot set bool. I set the property on to false. Okay, so if if ever that's called, that will uh, is essentially the same as um, setting this property to true on the animator. And if ever this function is called, we set it to false. So that's how we'll switch it. So I'll just save that. Um, I could now if I wanted, and, and let's do it. I'll get rid of these. I don't. I don't think I need these. Um, leaving them there does no harm, but uh, I don't need them. Uh, so I think I am ready to go with my bulb controller. Now all I need to f all now all I need to do is figure out where is where am I going to call that code. So I have I've looked at the code and I ha I see that there is. Let's do the auto switch controller first. So here's the auto switch controller, and I notice that when someone anything actually currently the way it's coded if anything walks into the trigger box of the auto switch controller it doesn't even have to be the hero but if anything walks into the trigger box of the auto switch controller it calls the function turn on on this object so if it calls this uh, function turn on which essentially sets the property up above here on the switch to true just to, or to false just so that we know the switch is false and it also um, um, connects up to the switch animator, not the bulb animator, sets the property on the switch animator uh, called switch off to whatever the value of this is, is default. So essentially the switch will uh, will flip off, or sorry, will flip on. And likewise this one, uh, the switch will flip off. So not only now do I want to um, not only do I want to flip the switch, but I also want to sort of flip the light, so to speak. So I, I somehow want to go like the bulb dot and I want to call this function sort of turn light on something like that so when I'm turning on I want to go turn light on so not only do I want to uh, flip the, the, the switch but I also want to sort of call this function on the bulb controller which will flip the light but of course I need to create this variable so up here I am going to create a variable. We'll create it up here at the top. And it's going to be of type of bulb controller. So some people were spelling this wrong. Or, so make sure you're, you're using the exact same name as your class. So it's going to be of type bulb controller. I'll make it public. Oops, spelled wrong. Public um, bulb controller. And we'll call it the bulb. The bulb. There we go. So now we have a variable that's going to hold a bulb controller object and then we'll be able to call the turn light on function on it. And likewise, we will also be able to, in the turn off um, uh, function, we'll be able to call the turn off function on the bulb. So next up, what we need to do is actually wire it up. So let me save this and I will go to the auto switch object game object I'll go down to my auto switch controller and I can now see this new property called the bulb which is not equal to anything if I grab the bulb game object and pop it in there it's going to take the bulb controller component that's on this game object and wire it up for me and I think that's it so let's hit play so I walk over to there and it goes on, I walk back, it comes off, there you go. So when I walk into this, uh, on trigger enter 2D is being, on trigger enter 2D is being called on um, the auto switch controller. So that's the script that's attached to the auto switch. It's calling the turn on function uh, here, which is essentially flipping the switch, but now it's also flipping the light. So I'm going to just grab that code there for a second because this is going to be exactly the same for my manual switch. So I'll go to my manual switch controller 
and it also has a turn on and turn off function so it's going to be exactly the same in here I'm going to have turn on in here I'm going to have turn off and uh, so yeah, in here I'm going to have turn off and again up here I am going to make a public property public property P or sorry public uh, BULB bulb controller and call it the bulb and now I have to go and wire it up so just for demonstration purposes I'm not going to wire this up um, manually by going in here I could now for example let me just save this uh, I could now go in here go to the manual switch con here we now see I have a property called uh, the bulb controller I could drag this down in here but rather than doing it manually I am actually going to do it uh, programmatically so again the awake function is a really good uh, place to do it so in here I need to somehow write code that says will you go and get me uh, the game object called the bulb um, and get the the bulb controller off it so one way of doing this is taking the bulb and, and putting a tag on it so I'm going to add a tag um, and let me create a tag and I'll call it uh, bulb and so back to my bulb and go to the tag and I'll tag it bulb so this has been tagged there's a few ways of doing this by the way but uh, this is now being tagged bulb so now what I can do is in my code I can do um, so I can go game object dot find so I'm actually calling um, a static function here now because I'm, I'm calling a function directly on the class game object and you can see it here find game objects with tag now there's two of them there's one that says find game objects with tag and there's one that says find game object with tag this returns a list or an array of game objects that have the tag specified this returns just the first one it finds that has the tag uh, specified I know there is only one game object in my particular uh, scene that has the, the tag uh, bulb so I'll be safe enough just to go find the one and only game object with the tag uh, bulb so that will give me back a game object so I could better create a variable of type game object and I'll call it uh, the bulb geo there you go so I've created a variable of type game object and I put it equal to and then I do a search for uh, a game object with the tag bulb and I put it equal to it remember the other way I could have done it is wired it up um, sort of via the inspector but I'm doing it programmatically so now this variable here should now be pointing to this game object here so now I have to get the component uh, the bulb controller component of that game object so now I will go to get the component I'll go the bulb game object dot get component and what type of component am I looking for I'm looking for the bulb controller component will you get me this component and it will return it back to me and I better put it into a variable so what variable will I put it into look I put it into this variable which can hold a bulb controller so I'll just go the bulb is equal to whatever I get back so one last time I create a variable that can hold a game object I then say dear game object will you find me the first game object um, with the tag bulb that's fine by me because I only have one game object with the tag bulb it will find my bulb and it will return the game object and I store it in this variable then I go to the bulb game object and I say will you get me the component call, uh, of type bulb controller that is on you and it will find it and I store it in the variable bulb so now I no longer have to do, uh, physically wire this up and because of that I don't I can also now make this private if I wish so here in the manual switch controller this is how I've done it programmatically and in the auto switch controller I haven't done it programmatically I still have to sort of wire it up so now I, do, I can save this um, and so the minute the game the, the level starts the awake function will be called and this will be programmatically wired up saving me the hassle not that it was much hassle but saving me the hassle of trying to sort of you know drag this into sort of a property down here 
So hopefully it'll all work now. I hit play. Uh, we knew we know the auto one already works. On off, on off. This one, walk up here, press the space bar, on, press the space bar again, off, on, off. If I'm out here and I press the space bar, nothing happens. Yeah, I have to be within its range and then on, off, on, off. And that's it. Um, let me just go through some of the things that I, I saw that were um, sort of going going maybe a little bit astray with G. I'll just bring this down here so we can see it. Um, so the, the naming is important. This game object, some people called it like, uh, you know, lifted as bulb off, the name of the, the, the original sprite. Uh, give, it a, give it a sensible name. Um, for me, it makes sense that the script that's attached to this is called the bulb controller. Some people called it, uh, like w one person called it an animator controller. You know, that doesn't really make much sense. I understand that it's controlling the animator, but um, the who's animator? So maybe if the if the script was called the bulb animator controller, um, that would have been that would have been okay. Um, so again, just good naming. Um, then some people. Um, in here, for example, some people inside the input manager said, you know, in, I, I have an input manager and it's attached to the hero and it, it's constantly, be, update is constantly being called and it's checking to see if the space bar is pressed. And it says, listen, if the space bar is pressed, call the toggle switch function on uh, on the switch. And the switch is the manual switch controller. Yeah? So if you hit the space bar, call the toggle switch function on the, the manual switch controller. So it calls, uh, this function on the manual switch controller and it says listen if the switch is enabled then turn it you know and, and if it's off turn it on otherwise turn it off uh, interesting the switch has to be enabled switch enabled only gets true uh, switch enabled gets true when uh, let me see down here switch enabled gets true uh, you call enable switch when you walk when someone walks into the trigger box of it and it gets disabled when someone walks out of it and that of course is why um, when I'm here here we go, I'm playing the game. When the hero is here, the hero hasn't walked into the trigger box of the manual switch, hasn't walked into this area, so the switch isn't enabled. So when I press space, nothing has happened. But now when I walk in here, now I should be in the trigger box of the manual switch. So now when I press space bar, it's enabled. Uh, one person, back to my input manager, one person you know, wrote code inside in the input manager that essentially said, you know, when you press the space bar, toggle the switch, but also, you know, turn on and off the bulb. And it's just really not a great place to put it. It works, so it's it's sort of it's fine in many senses. But essentially the input manager is attached to the hero, which is another problem as well. It probably shouldn't be attached to the hero. But the input manager is attached to the hero. And then if the input manager is not only is it responsible for sort of handling input, which when I wrote it that was the idea, now it's han it's responsible for handling input and turning on and off a bulb. So it it's sort of important to keep the right code in the right scripts. Um, the other solution someone had had uh, put together, and again it worked, was they uh, put a trigger box, if I remember rightly, they put a trigger box on the uh, hero, and they said when um, the hero, um, when something enters the trigger box of a hero, so in other words, like when the auto switch enters the trigger box of a hero, well then turn on the bulb. Uh, and again, worked, but you know, just code in the wrong place. The other thing someone did was um, similar to how I've done it. They have a, a bulb. Con they, they wrote a bulb controller uh, which turns an on and off animations. But they not only did they attach the bulb controller to the bulb, but they also attached the bulb controller to uh, one of the switches, which is interesting because if you, and I'll just I'll do it here for a second. So if you sort of gets it, let's say the, the, the manual the manual switch over here. And if you attach the a bulb controller to it like that, um, and where's my bulb controller? There's my bulb controller. The bulb controller code, when, when, the, when the scene starts or is awoken, Unity will go and call the awake function on every object that's every script object that's attached to every uh, game object so the bulb controller 
script is attached to this now, my manual switch, and it's also attached to the bulb game object. So it will. So there's two bulb controller objects. There's one class, but there will be two bulb controller objects. One attached to the bulb and one attached to the manual switch. And Unity, that's like creating two houses from the one plan. And Unity will call the awake function on this ob bulb controller object and it will call the awake function on this bulb controller object. So, the, so in when it calls the awake function on the bulb controller object that's attached to the bulb, it will get the animator that's attached to the bulb. But when it calls the awake function on the bulb controller object that's attached to the manual s switch, this will get the animator um, that's on the manual switch, which won't be the bulb animator, it will be the switch animator. There you go, it'll be the switch animator. Because the code says, get me the animator that's attached to the same game object I'm attached to. So this code will get this animator. And then what happens is you go the animator.setBool on and you're trying to set the on property on the animator. But you're no longer setting the on property on the bulb animator. You're now trying to set the on property on the switch animator and it doesn't have an on, pro on property. It has a switch off property but it doesn't have an on property. So the the, the student who was trying this was getting errors saying you know uh, the animator doesn't have an on property but they were looking at the code and were saying it does look there it is and yeah but of course the problem was they had attached the, 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 the bulb controller script to, uh, to sort of the manual switch as well as the bulb. Um, other problems, I think, you know, another one was uh, people get, get, getting the spelling wrongs, for example. Uh, things like, uh, you know, the auto switch controller there, and they were like the bulb, and they would, uh, this is a, a variable that can hold a bulb controller object, and they had spelled bulb controller wrong, maybe like with a small b, for example. So you can see here, bulb controller is actually spelled with a capital B, so they spelt it with a small b, and then um, they were doing things like, where do I use the bulb? And they were doing things like, uh, yeah, control S, and then we were going hit play, and we were getting errors, and it says all compile. Oh, sorry, let me go to the console. We were getting errors, and the errors were like the uh, you know the the type of namespace name bulb controller cannot be found. I can't find this thing called. Yeah, and I couldn't find it. Yeah, um, and that's of course because there isn't a thing called bulb controller. You know, it, it doesn't exist. It's it's bulb controller with a capital B. So again, make sure your spelling is is correct. Another question you might have is let's look at the auto switch controller or the manual switch controller. It really doesn't matter. They're almost the same. But if you look at the uh, auto switch controller. It is very similar to the bulb controller. It has it has a animator that you sort of turn on and turn off. And if you call the turn on function, there you go. Look, it's 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 setting the the property of the animator to false, and here it's setting the property to true. But it also has another property. Not only is there a property on the animator controller called switch off, but there's also a, another property called switch off on the animator controller switch object itself. So it's got it's got two properties, um, and really I may not have needed two properties, but sometimes it's handy to sort of just know when the switch is on or off. And so this one is is sort of when this is false, the switch is off. When it's true, the switch is on. Um, so I can I can easily test this property to see whether it's on or off. This one actually causes tr the transition to to occur. So in the bulb controller. I don't have a, a property like that. All I do is I just set the property on the on the animator controller on the bulb to either true or false. And it's fine, I can get away with it. But if we needed to know whether the bulb was on, so let's say for some reason um, we needed to know whether the bulb is, was on or not. And if the bulb, and let's say you can only shoot bullets when the bulb is on. So you might have to write a, co a function, and you'd call it maybe public, uh, and you might call it, uh, and it might return a boolean, 
um, and you'd say is bulb on and the idea is you're going to write this function and um, uh, you're going to write this function sorry there one second Oh yeah, it, the reason it's giving me an error is it's saying, uh, listen, you said it's returning a bool and the code here return, is returning nothing. Yeah, So uh, usually the way I, I do it is I, I create a, a boolean in here called the answer. This is the answer of the from the function. And let's just say uh, return, return ants. So I'm going to return the answer. Uh, and now I would do something like, I want to do something like if the bulb is on, I'm going to set, you know, if the bulb is on, I want to sort of set answer, answer equals true. Otherwise, I want to set the answer equal to false. So there is a function called is bulb on. It's going to return a boolean. So usually the way I do it is I create a variable called the answer. Uh, ants, and then I'm going to test something and it, this I have to write this yet but it's going to say if the bulb is on then the answer is true if the bulb is otherwise the bulb is not on so the answer is false and then I return the answer so I'll return either true or false so here I need to figure out how do I how do I know if the bulb is on or on on or off well I don't like this code can't tell me easily whether the bulb is on or off now I could the an, the animator controller could tell me whether the the bulb is on or off because and again I go back here I'll go to my animator controller for my bulb let me go back to my project oh, there it is actually there's my animator controller for my bulb so this animator controller if if its property on is set to true well then the bulb is on and if it's not set to true well then the bulb is off so I could try and connect up to the animator so I could go to bulb animator dot and I could get can I get the property get P get parameter so I'm going to get parameter and I will then maybe type in the and I have to type in the index of the parameter so it is probably zero it's the zero with parameter on it and I have to say is it equal to true yeah I could try to do something like that that's not quite working. Maybe what I could, do. how else could I get the, I'm getting errors here. So maybe uh, I need to figure out some other way to, to get the, the parameter or the property off the animator. So it's, I think it's time for me now to look up the API documentation for animators uh, to see what I could do. So I have it open here in another window. So let me just bring this over here into another window, uh, open it up. So I've got the scripting API. I'll do a search for animator. Uh, there's the animator. And I can see here are all of the functions that I can use on the animator. I'm, I, I'm currently looking for get parameter, uh, sets animator controller parameters. I also need see that there is a function called get bool. Uh, which returns the value of a given bool parameter. Actually, that might look like what I want. So I could give its name. So it gives an example here. So I could go animator get bool crouch. Oh yeah, that looks like what I want. So I could go the bulb animator dot get bool. Get me the value of the bool called on. And if that's equal to true, then the bulb must be on. So return true otherwise return false yep that that would work so this so I could go to the animator to figure out whether the bulb is on or off and that's absolutely fine I can do it that way but often what I do is I create another property here that replicates this property on the animator so I would just create a, a property here it can be private uh, it'll be a bool as well and I will call it uh, bulb on for example and when we turn the light on I will set bulb on equal to true and when we turn the light off I will set bulb on equals to false so now when I turn the light on I set this 
uh, variable here to true and then I also set the on property on the animator controller to true so it is in, in some ways a waste because I've sort of I've duplicated them and when I've set this to false I also set this to false yeah so I'm sort of replicating them but sometimes I prefer doing it that way because then this sort of just becomes just that little bit easier I, I can write rewrite this now to say if bulb on or oh, sorry if bulb on is equal to true well then return answer return or set the answer to false, otherwise or set the answer equal to, or set the answer equal to true, otherwise set the answer equal to false. So it's, you know, it's sort of six and one half dozen in the other, but it's just a preference. And now as I look at this code, what I could actually do is just go change all of this and simply go return bulb on. Oh, spelled wrong. Return bulb on. So just return the value of bulb on. And if it's a bulb on, it'll be true. When the bulb is on, bulb on will be false if it's, on, if it's not. Of course, I could have also gone just return the bulb animator dot get bool. I could have done that as well, and that would have worked perfectly fine. But doing it this way sort of saves me a little bit of writing. So it's sort of habit on my behalf. So when when I have it, 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 when I had this switch for switch off again, look, I almost have two of them. They're replicating. This is that with a capital S. This is a small s. So when I set this, I set this to false. Look, switch off is equal to false, and then I use its value to set this. I'm setting it to false. When this is true, I'm setting this to true. So again, I'm replicating it. But it can be just useful to have a, a sort of a, a copy here. And do I use it anywhere? I actually don't in, in the in the auto switch controller. So I could get rid of it. There's no there's no reason why I, I need it here. Um, here I also in the this is the manual switch controller. Um, and I ha now here I, I I do use it. So here when you're toggling this toggling the switch in the in the manual switch controller I check to see listen if the switch is off if that's true if it is off well then turn it on otherwise turn it off so um, I use it in this one but I actually don't in, in the auto switch controller uh, so yeah there you go so again I, I don't I don't need this in, in this particular instance um, so I should get, I'll get rid of it oh I'll get rid of it um, and I, I actually do, also don't need it here. I could get rid of it here, but uh, I just I just won't bother. Uh, any other sort of common mistakes I've been seeing? Um, no, I I think that was sort of it for the the most part. Um, so just remember where you're putting your code, uh, watch your spelling, uh, and don't overcomplicate it. It, it. Often it's easier than than you think.